Hey guys, Andy Tran here with Interbark Outdoors. In this video, I wanted to do an update on my EDC. I did an EDC video a while back ago, which is kind of a meld between urban stuff and the wilderness stuff. And so I wanted to give you guys an update on that because it's been a few years actually since I released that video. And so I'm not gonna say it's a perfect system. I'm not gonna try and sell you guys on stuff. It's just accumulation of things that I've kind of picked up along the way and you can kind of chalk it up to life experiences and bad decisions. So check it out. So this video is an EDC video, not a pocket dump video. So I'll start with uh, basically the ground up. So what I sleep with, what I go to shower with, what I always have on me is my watch. This is a Casio Pro Trek. This is a watch that I got when I was a ranger, backcountry ranger down in Mount Rainier National Park. And uh, I got this one because it has a lot of the features and some of the higher end watches, but it didn't cost quite as much. And I was doing some research and talking to some ranger friends and coworkers, and a lot of the guys that have been around for a long time chose this one. This was really good on the trail because with this and a topo map, as long as I knew which trail I was on, with the altimeter because it was so accurate, this was really easy for me to figure out exactly where I was. Uh, I like that it has uh, a pressure graph so you can see if the pressure in the atmosphere is trending up, trending down, what have you, and that can help you judge a little bit of the weather. Uh, also, I have a silicone ring. This is a ring made by Groove, and the wife and I, when we got married, decided that I shouldn't get a standard metal ring because of my occupation and the hazards associated with getting this caught on something or the discomforts of, uh, of working in the field and having jewelry on your hands. So that's pretty much all that. The two knives that I'll go to is the Topps Baja 3.0. This is a fixed blade knife. It comes in this nice leather sheath and it's a perfect size blade. Your municipality might be a little bit different when it comes to what you can carry, whether or not you're allowed to carry a fixed blade knife or not. But for me, this is great. It's not a full size handle, so it's able to remain fairly compact as compared to say a folding knife. The folding knife that I, I tend to go to is a zero tolerance tinder, 0550. So along with something to cut stuff with is something to burn stuff with. Um, I don't carry both of these at the same time, so I, I usually choose one or the other, but a standard Bic lighter, they're super inexpensive. They always seem to work as long as they stay dry, but uh, these are really good and you can also use it to pop open bottles and things like that. So they're they're kind of the gold standard when it comes to lighters. Um, you can pretty much find them anywhere from uh, REI all the way to, you know, the 7-Eleven on the corner of the street. Uh, the other one that I have is a Zippo lighter. Uh, Wick lighters are great because they're windproof, they're low technology, and uh, they just always seem to work. Now the great thing about these two is that underneath here, and I, and I outlined this in my old EDC video. Um, if you pull open the flap, you can keep a bunch of extra flints in there. And even if you run out of fuel, take for example, um, you're needing to light you know, a small cotton ball or something like that on fire and you don't quite got enough juice with just the regular spark, you can slowly grind and then get a bunch of dust. And then you can circle that dust together, spark it, and then you can uh, get a much stronger spark that way. Uh, secondly, it would be a wallet. There's nothing special about this one. It's a small wallet, mainly to carry cards. I put a few, you know, $20 bills in there as well. But this one has my standard driver's license, my work ID, access cards, a couple credit cards, and then um, like health insurance cards and things like that. I try and keep it as slim as possible just because I, I'm tired of having bulk in my pockets. Moving on to my set of keys. So the main things on this are obviously the keys that I use to drive and access things like my house. But um, this is the fire beaner made by Outdoor Element. This is something that I got in one of those description boxes that I reviewed. Um, and it's actually pretty cool. So you got a spark on it. Whoops. So that's always working. So you can catch on fire things that have uh, flammable liquids or cotton balls, things of that nature. It has a small screwdriver, which is pretty easy to integrate onto anything that you need. And then a small line cutter, 
which is always handy for, you know, like threads and things like that. Um, and it also keeps all the keys nice and tidy with the little tiny key ring holes there. The other two things I have is a small flashlight. So this one's made by PK Designs. And I was a little bit skeptic about this because this bezel is so smooth. I was, I was worried that, you know, eventually after using it a whole bunch that this would eventually come off and pop off, but it hasn't. And I'm really impressed by it. It's super bright, especially for its size, uh, much brighter than a cell phone light. And uh, the other thing that I have on this and probably the thing that people are impressed with most when they see me pull random stuff out of my pocket is a set of earplugs. So this is a set of Safari reusable earplugs. Boom. And uh, they look just like this. They go into your ear. And unlike the military 3M ones, these ones do not give you tinnitus. They, uh, they actually work. Um, so regardless of whether or not I'm you know, shooting indoor, outdoor, I usually use two pairs of ears just because I'm already losing my hearing from accidents I've had. And it's always nice to have something that can go underneath your ear, uh, your ear pro if you have uh, those ear muffs. So there's two pistols that I tend to carry. The first one is a Glock 19 Foland Special. Uh, I'm not able to afford a Roland Special quite at this time, so I decided to build my own. Uh, this one is a, a Glock 19 frame, Brownell Slide, Silencer Co. Barrel, Trijicon RMR Type 2, and then a Texas Black Rifle Company Comp, and then a Olight Valkyrie PL2. Overall, this is a pretty decent setup. Uh, it's very fast shooting, flat shooting, and fairly accurate, especially past 25 yards when you use the RMR sight. The holster that I got for this is Black Point Tactical. Um, the reason why I chose them is they have a pretty good reputation, but they're also one of the few companies that actually make uh, a holster designed specifically for the Olight Valkyrie PL2. So there's not many companies that will do that that's made specifically for it. Um, so that's why I chose this one. And overall, I like it a lot. However, the belt loops that came with it were a little bit too narrow this way to be able to clear a lot of the belts that I used. So I decided to switch them out. I'm using Ulta Clips. So instead of uh, you know trying to clear certain parts of my belt in order to get it through, I decided to go with this route. The second pistol that I'll tend to carry is the Smith & Wesson M&P 2.0, and this one is in 40 caliber. So this is a pistol that is near and dear to my heart. Um, a lot of my pistol training in the past year and a half or so has been with this particular pistol. So I probably have somewhere around 3,000 rounds through it. So it's still a baby. Uh, but certainly have more rounds to this pistol than my other pistols just because of uh, all the range time that I've had. But this pistol is equipped with the Streamlight TLR1HL, which is a fantastic light. So I have two different belts. Both are made by 511. This one's a standard leather belt that has like a, a polymer insert in it that's pretty nice and stiff. Adds a lot of nice support to it. Also has a small hidden pocket back here, which I guess is for like a handcuff key or something like that. But uh, this is awesome because it, it looks like a normal belt and pretty much works with every single holster. The only issue I have with this one is because this Cobra buckle, um, it's, it's hard to pass this through a lot of holster loops, especially with this added riggers loop right there. So the clip that normally, or the loop that normally came with the black point uh, holster, this wouldn't fit, right? So I've had to use, excuse me, the Ulta clip to be able to bypass that. And so far it's worked just fine. There's nothing special about this other than the fact that every time you pull this particular mechanism, um, there's a, a, a combustion right here and then it sends a small piece of metal down range at a high velocity. So um, the reason why I carry the first generation versus the second generation, by the way, I do have both, is the stippling. 
So the stippling is extremely uncomfortable on the skin and it also wreaks havoc on clothing. So the 1.0 is what I carry um, uh, off duty or you know in my normal life and then the 2.0 uh, is reserved solely for duty use. But I do have a little bit of grip tape right there to help a little bit you know with recall management and control. Um, but yeah, overall that is pretty much what it is for the pistols. Now when it comes to carrying food for the pistols, uh, I'm using the Blue Forest Gear 10 speed pouches. Now as you can tell by all the wear on these pouches, I've used these quite a bit and it's probably time for me to repair and or replace these. But what I like about them is you can carry uh, any magazine you like to because of the elastic nature of this. They can expand, contract to accommodate metal magazines, polymer magazines, you know, nine all the way up to 45, etc. So these are pretty awesome. When I first got these, I thought that the, this Velcro is gonna be a little cheesy and not work as well as it has, but these have actually worked out to be quite, quite the retention device, um, especially if you keep it clean. Now, the only thing that has seemed to wear out for me is some of the stitching here has come undone a little bit. And then obviously some of the, the rubber coated fabric has uh, worn down all the way through. But like I said, so here's some Glock magazines. They fit really well into the carrier. And because this is a nice thin fabric, uh, everything is nice and low profile. So you can carry two magazines, doesn't have much of a print on it. And the retention is really good. So you can hang this upside down, no big deal. Um, and they're nice and quiet. So unlike if you rub up against uh, something hard with Kydex, it doesn't have that loud clanking sound. All right, so that is my EDC. Obviously I don't carry all the stuff at the same time. It's just, you know, a couple different options that I tend to gravitate towards um, just because of everything that I do and life choices that I've made. Um, these are the pistols and the knives and carriers and all that stuff that I tend to go towards. I'm sure you guys will chime in with what you guys like to carry. And if you have any suggestions on uh, what I should swap out and why, not just because it's a brand, uh, I'd love to hear it. But uh, that's pretty much it. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. And also check out my Facebook page, Instagram, and other social media. But as always, take care out there.